What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to put a brand new part on the truck. As you guys know, um, several months back I changed out the shocks on the front of this thing to the Bilstein 5100 series shock. Um, excuse all of the missing paint on the frame. I, it's been a minute since I've really cleaned it up. Nice, sunny, kind of spring-like day, and uh, I don't have the uh, Bilstein shocks on the rear. I still have the old, nasty, rough country shocks on the rear of this truck, and that is something that we've got to get changed out. For Christmas time, we've got several new things. We've got brand new white toolbox from Harbor Freight down there we're going to have to put together. Uh, brand new grill, and then here we've got the, uh, the new rear shocks. And uh, today we are going to be getting these things put on. I cannot wait to finally have matching shocks that go all the way around this truck. Just one of those things where, um, don't need that. It's one of those things where you just, you want it, but you don't want to pay for it. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, it's about time. All right, here we've got the brand new Bilstein 5100 series shock absorbers fresh out of the box. I absolutely love the way these shocks look um, just because of the color and the simplicity of them. They're not chrome. I think they're zinc plated is what somebody told me. And I've got them on the front of the truck. They've improved the ride factor on the front by a lot. And uh, putting them on the back of the truck should definitely help out. Um, but what you get out of the box is just like this. I know some people say that they don't get the shock boot out of the box which is kind of strange because I've never gotten a pair of shocks that didn't come with the boot out of the box but uh, that might happen to uh, you know wherever you buy it from but in my case they came with the boots they come banded together like so uh, so they don't decompress but super super simple to install all you have to do is take out the bolt on this one take out two bolts mount it underneath the truck and uh, you know just swap them out yeah, it's a super simple thing to do now you might be looking at me wondering why you know I didn't get some like Fox shocks or you know some resi shocks or whatever and in my specific case I don't need you know reservoir shocks they look cool and I quite honestly did think about getting the Bilstein uh, 50, I think it's 5160 series resi shocks uh, but I, I don't know. I just like the simplicity of just the single shock. I like the way that it looks by itself, and I just didn't really need you know the reservoir on there. We're gonna throw these things on the truck today, and uh, it's gonna improve, I think, the ride quality. Just maybe a little bit better, but anything's gonna be better than what's on there right now. We've got so many different things we need to get done to this truck. It's not even funny. Uh, but this year's gonna be the year for it. I don't know exactly how much is gonna be changing as far as like aesthetics go, as far as like the front end and the way it looks. I might do something a little bit different with the grill. Uh, but as far as everything else goes, I am pretty happy with the way that it looks. We've got to replace the CV axle on the driver's side. Uh, I noticed the other day it's got a leak in the boot. It's got a little split, as usual. Uh, so I'm going to try to find some higher quality uh, CV axles that will work a little bit better with these trucks. Okay, so uh, <laughs> I decided to go ahead and put the toolbox together. And uh, yeah, that took a while. I don't know why they had to make this so complicated, but like nothing fit like any anywhere close to how it's supposed to, but we got it done, got her put together, and it's like 5.30 now, so the shocks are, <laughs> they're still sitting right there, so that's probably going to be a thing for tomorrow, I would say, but toolbox is pretty cool. Um, I needed something bigger, I mean, as you can see. It's a mess in here right now. So uh, I've got that little toolbox, and so I got this one as a gift, and it's pretty cool. I mean, it's got the whole, you know, inside compartments here. And apparently, you can't open that without that being open. So that's odd. But yeah, it's pretty cool. Come with all the little tool mats and everything installed. So I mean, it's a Harbor Freight box. You know, obviously, I'm, I'm not going to go out and get a you know, two thousand dollar snap on when you know, something like this would definitely be more than enough. Okay, so I went to go do the job, put the shocks on uh, yesterday or the day before. Yeah, two days ago, actually two days ago, and realized I don't have the wrench needed or the socket size needed to unbolt the bottom uh, shock mount for the rear shocks. So of course I we'll go over to Amazon and uh, you know, trusty Amazon Prime, we got ourselves a brand new. 
21 millimeter, yeah, 21 millimeter gear wrench and a 21 millimeter Craftsman socket for like under 20 bucks. So that's why I love Amazon so much. The same Craftsman socket you can go to like Sears and get for like maybe 14 bucks for one socket. Uh, just got it over at Amazon for you know like 4.99 or something like that. Well, it is still not the best in the world outside of tech. Definitely want to get these shocks finished up on this truck. So what's really kind of dumb about the weather right now is the fact that yesterday it was just like 57 degrees and we had storms, we had severe weather, we had tornado warnings, flood warnings, and then now today it's just snowing its balls off outside. So if you want to uh, move to Missouri, you could definitely get all four seasons in one day. Absolutely. The road is nasty right now. It's like, this is the stuff that I really did not want to drive the truck in at all. Because now I don't really have a, I don't have a way to get the salt off. And, you know, clean it up just before I put it back in the garage. So, I had to figure something out. Oh, Duramax decided he's going to go out and have some fun in the parking lot here. It looks like he ain't scared. Good looking truck. Here's where we're at. I went ahead, we just have one side of the shocks off uh, right now. I just want to kind of show you guys, you know, what I did, what I used, you know, how I took it off. Really, really simple, um, you know, as pretty much everything is on these trucks, but um, super easy. There's videos all over YouTube that go into complete detail um, about this, so I'm not going to go boring you guys with a completely, you know, long removal and install video. But your shocks will have uh, just two different style mounts on the rear. These are the Rough Country ones that came with the lift. As you see, they're kind of, you know, dirty and uh, they're kind of getting worn out. They're not the uh, the best riding shocks in the world, which is why I wanted to replace them with the Bilstein. Uh, but anyway, you've got this mount that mounts on one side. For the uh, driver's side, it mounts on the top. It's just two little bolts you got to take out. I believe they're 13 millimeter, so you just use a 13 millimeter wrench like this with your socket and you got to rig together some kind of extensions to get up there but uh, take that off and then that is a 22 millimeter I believe bolt and you just use that paired with a crescent wrench and uh, remove it that way. I mean, for the most part shocks are pretty simple um, if you've never replaced your shocks before and somehow still have 20 year old factory shocks probably wanted to shoot it down with some you know pb blaster or seafoam deep creeper something like that to penetrate that rust because your bolts will be really uh, pretty difficult to get off but since mine have been off pretty recently um, you know very very simple and to install the Bilstein shocks they just the same exact mount setup everything fits just right in the same location so all you have to do is just uh, go backwards and just put it back in the way you took it out okay we've got the uh, top mount done uh, the bottom mount if you remember watching my video about putting these on the front uh, you might remember I had to grind off uh, part of the mount part right here and uh, it's going to be the same on the back. It doesn't quite fit, so we're going to have to do a little bit of grinding in order to get it to fit on there. If you want, you could probably bend uh, the tabs, the mounting tabs, with a hammer or you know, maybe like a pry bar or something. Uh, but I prefer not to just because you know, I really don't want to mess with it. So I'm just going to go ahead and just grind off a couple of you know, millimeters of that you know, mounting point, And it should just be able to slide right in there very easy. So just get the grinder out there. We're going to take off just a very, very small amount. And that's all you really have to do in order to get it to slide into that. Um, I did that to the front, and you have to take a very, you know, like I said, small amount off in order just to get it to slide into that mount. Uh, that way you can put on your bolt, and everything will mount up just like it's supposed to, and uh, everything will be just fine. Okay, we've got our iron ton angle grinder kit from Northern Tool. The reason I got this one is because A, it was fairly cheap, and uh, B, um, they come with like all the discs and stuff that uh, we're going to need in order to do what we need to do. And obviously you're going to be able to use this, you know, for many, many other things to come. But here it is, just a simple um, 
you know, simple angle grinder. You put your discs on here, you plug it in, you fire it up, and uh, that's about it. It looks like we've got a few different discs. We've got some sanding pads here. Uh, what else we got? Wire wheel in here. Wire wheel might be nice for, uh, you know, frame sanding, stuff like that. And then, of course, we've got our basic grinding wheels, which we will be using to uh, grind off what we need to on the shock. So I'm going to put this together real quick. Okay, a little bit of time with our uh, new grinder and the grinding wheel, and uh, we've got the shock in place. It didn't take a whole lot to do uh, to get it there, so you just kind of have to do a little bit at a time and then go to see if you could fit it up in there because you don't want it to fit too, too loose. Um, you want it to fit still kind of tight so it doesn't move around, um, you know, in the mount. So we've got it mounted up right now. It's looking pretty good. I know my uh, rear axle needs a little bit of help, but, um, you know, hopefully that'll come here this spring. We'll get everything all cleaned up under here. Uh, so we've got the driver's side on, and we're just going to do the exact same thing on the passenger side. Uh, you remove, you know, the bottom mount, the upper mount, and uh, just put your new shock on. But we're going to grind it down uh, before that so we can get it ready to go and uh, pretty much close to ready to mount onto the truck. Basically what you do is you just uh, take the shock and you just grind around here and make it nice and even. Um, you don't want it to be like angled or crooked or anything. So I just usually do one side. I guess if you really wanted to, you can do, you know, both sides. Uh, but I just usually do one side. And uh, just a little bit of grinding goes a long way. You just have to uh, grind it and then, you know, just fit it in there and see if it fits. And then uh, grind some more if it doesn't. So uh, that's what we'll do. Super simple install. Like I said, shocks on these trucks are super easy. You just need, I mean, these are the tools I'm using, just a socket and a couple of wrenches that's really all you need but uh, super simple and it just completely changes the look and hopefully upgrades the ride quality of the truck and as i may have mentioned before i know the big thing these days are like the fox shocks or even like the chrome full throttle shocks or the reservoir shocks or whatever uh, like i said or I may not have said i was planning on possibly doing bilstein 5160s which are basically the same shocks they just have a reservoir on them uh, but really honestly in my application <laughs> reservoir is just going to be for looks and uh, it's just an extra you know you could buy two of these shocks for the price of one of those resi shocks Maybe they come at a later date if I feel like doing it, but I don't know. I honestly prefer the uh, clean single shock look, and uh, the Bilstein finish definitely, you know, makes it look nice, makes it look upgraded, new, and uh, you know, just uh, they usually have a pretty good uh, ride quality. Okay, we've got her in here, very very tight fit. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a small flathead screwdriver, stick it in the hole, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of pull the whole shock in until we get that hole lined up that way we can kind of get it situated in there and uh, get the bolt in all right and just like so we've got bilstein 5100 series shocks in all four corners of the truck looks so so much better under there than those rough country shocks did um, everybody might not have to uh, grind those down like I did uh, but I know in my case I had to grind the fronts and the rears down so I know some people have not had to grind uh, either of them or just didn't have to grind the rears or whatever but look at those old rough country shocks they're in such bad rough shape I mean they've been on there for a while now and they're not the best shocks to begin with but uh, you know they, they did their job so we're gonna go take this for a test drive and see if we could uh, tell any difference and the only one thing that might concern me just a little bit is I don't know if you guys could see from this angle but that that uh, little rubber boot is awfully close to my exhaust so I'm assuming that it's probably um, probably gonna get melted because my, uh, my other ones didn't have boots on them, so I don't know. Uh, but I guess we'll find out. And just a small update from the DGR valve change. I don't think it's done any good. I still think it's gonna be injectors because we're still doing the same stuff that we were before, so nothing's better. And uh, you know, I hate that, but I guess it's time to move on to the next step. So we're going for a quick little test drive just to see how these shocks feel and so far I can actually tell a difference in the back um, actually rides a whole lot smoother it's not as I guess 
not really bouncy, but it's stiff. I, it's a little bit more cushy than it was before. Those rough country shocks, you could just, uh, you know, pretty much, it felt like I was riding on like basically leaf springs. For those of you who have been wondering, 18% tinted windshield versus no tint. Um, yeah, this is pretty much what it looks like when you're driving it at night. Maybe not as extreme as what the camera shows it yet, but uh, yeah, you know, this is it's pretty dark. So those of you guys who ask me on Instagram what my uh, windshield percent is, it is 18%. Um, I didn't want to go five. Yeah, I didn't want to be that person that went five and couldn't see anything at night, but um, with the uh, tin of windshield, it wasn't really too terrible as long as you've got some decent headlights. I can actually honestly say that these shocks helped the ride quality in the rear of this truck a ton. It is 100% better than it was with those rough country shocks. Uh, before, if I hit any little potholes or any manhole covers or whatever in the street, you could totally feel it and you could hear, you know, kind of the, I guess the strain of the, the rear of the truck and, and uh, you know, make some noises back there, uh, some clinking noises or whatever. And uh, don't have that anymore. It's actually a very comfortable, cushy ride. Like I said, I've had the Bilsteins up front for a while now and that didn't make a really huge difference as far as the ride quality went in the uh, in the whole truck but putting these in the rear has helped a ton um, every with everything else and it's helped even out that ride quality so much better so I'm definitely glad for that upgrade definitely worth it if you guys need an upgrade shock for your truck and don't want to spend a ton of money um, you know on something like a Fox shock now I uh, before I left I talked about this being an issue melting the uh, shock boot and it uh, is definitely an issue. I've got some shock boot on my uh, exhaust now, so that really sucks because I was really looking forward to having the shock boots on the rear shocks, but it looks like I'm probably gonna have to take them off just because of that issue right there. So unfortunately, uh, I guess you really just can't have it all. They look so much better with the shock boots on there, but I just don't think it's gonna happen. But shock boots or no shock boots, the shock is going to ride a whole ton better. It already does. And uh, like I said, I definitely recommend it. I've got them in all four corners of the truck, front and the rear now. The next thing I want to do is probably switch out my torsion keys uh, with an upgraded, maybe from zone off-road or something like that. Uh, because these are stock torsion keys, and believe it or not, those do wear out. I don't care what anybody tells you. I've heard a lot of people tell me that, uh, you know, torsion keys don't wear out. Your torsion bars wear out, blah, blah, blah. Um, your torsion keys are going to wear out. They're going to become rusty. They're not going to work, you know, like they're supposed to. Pretty much like anything else in the truck. So I do believe if I do replace those, uh, then it's going to help out a lot with the ride quality in the front, and that'll make everything better. Um, so pretty much that and traction bars are the two things that I would really like to add to this uh, suspension setup to make everything ride a lot better. But we've got a lot of stuff to do, like I said, for 2020, so this is just the beginning. Definitely stay tuned to the YouTube channel here and stay tuned to my Instagram page, at badd 71 if you don't follow already. Link will be down below in the description, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching the videos. Thank you to each and every one of you who have recently subscribed to the channel. Very, very much appreciated. 10,000 subscribers, and we will be giving away a set of Boost Auto Parts, tow mirrors, and uh, I hope this helped you out, guys. If you're looking for shocks for your truck, I can definitely recommend these Bilstein 5100s. I will have them on my Amazon storefront, and that link is also below in the description if you wanna click that. But anyway, guys, until next time, thank you so much for watching. We will see you all in the next video.